Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be painting a large tree coming in from the side. Well not really a large tree, a small um, decorative sort of hawthorn type winter tree um, as I've been requested to do so by a few people. Um, so what I'm going to do is paint a stormy sky and I'm going to use cling film uh, for the ground. So really there's a little bit of everything in this tutorial. I'm using my large calligraphy brush, so you can use a large harky brush, any large brush. Um, I've got my Saunders Waterford cold press paper, 140 pounds, taped to my board. And now I'm just going to wet the paper all over and that's raw sienna. I'm going to streak it across slightly haphazardly as per usual just so that with the wet in wet that should leave a bit of a glow in the sky and in the ground. Right next I'm going to mix together some indigo and some Payne's grey for the sort of stormy cloudy dark atmospheric clouds in the sky and to put plenty of really good thick paint across the foreground. Now I'm not too worried about the sky, I'm just going to put in some paint and let it do what it does so to speak because I just want a fairly plainish sky, still stormy but plainish because we want to put this big tree um, coming across the sky. But the tree is the focus of this painting, not the sky. Um, so I'm going to put in very, very dark, rich, thick paint across the bottom um, because I'm going to lay cling film over that area. So I want the bottom, the foreground, to have nice, rich, wet, thick paint so that when I apply the cling film, I'll get some nice effects. As you can see, I'm just keeping it nice and loose. I'm not really worrying too much um, all the time the paper's wet I know that my brush strokes are going to diffuse and soften um, and plus I'm going to put the cling film across the foreground which should give me some nice sort of rocky effects hopefully. I'm just going to put a bit more raw sienna into the foreground just to change it up a little bit just before I get the cling film on. Now I missed a little bit of filming there and all I did was I washed more water across the top because I wanted the the wash the sky wash to even out a little bit more so you can see that it's flowed down the page I turned it on its side um, like that and if you get any drips coming down like I had just now you can just carefully soften them back with a damp brush, not wet, because if it's wet you'll disturb it and cause runbacks and cauliflowers. I'm just gently smoothing it with a very gentle wipe with a tissue. Now I think that's about right. Now I'm going to tear off quite a large piece of the plastic food wrap or cling film and I'm going to lay it across the bottom, sort of die coming down so it's lower towards the right than it is at the left um, so that I can show the shape of the land, a bit of a hill there, hopefully. I'm just going to pull it about a little bit um, so that I can see that as dark and light areas, I can see where the, the plastic film is clinging to the paper where I'll have dark areas and around the edges I will have my lighter marks. Let's just have a look at it close up and you can see how it's looking um, where the cling film is touching. My sky is running down a little bit more and I just think that might be a bit distracting so I'm just going to mop it with a tissue again and then I think what I'll have to do is dry it flat. It's now completely dry and um, remember I said it has to be totally dry before you remove the cling film so just leave it, give it plenty of time. I'm peeling it off and 
I think that looks all right. Um, it's slightly damp in places where it's a little bit, the paint was very thick, but it's thick enough to hold its position. So if we're looking closely, I think we've got some very interesting marks and a good basis to continue with the painting. So I'm just going to leave it for a little while now and I'll come back and um, show you how I paint in the large overhanging trees. Right, I'm back now and the light's slightly different because it's, it's the afternoon. Uh, but I'm going to paint in a tree coming in from the left side across the building. And there's three brushes that I may use or may not. I've got two riggers, I've got a fine rigger and a slightly thicker, more blunter ended rigger and a squirrel mop. Now I'm with my rigger, I'm going to mix up a lot of paint because it's a large tree, so I'm going to need lots mixed up of this sort of um, runny but well pigmented inky consistency paint. Now I'm going to start across the masking tape so that when I paint the strokes and bend the brush around, see what I'm bending the brush as I pull it up, um, it looks like it continues off the page if you see what I mean. Now. It's given me a dry brush effect at the end and I really don't mind that. I'm more than happy to have an uneven look. It helps with the tree. But if you see, I'm placing my rigger brush sort of flat on the paper and then I'm pulling it up but moving my hand, not the brush, I'm moving my hand so that the hairs of the rigger then give me that kind of uneven randomish sort of branch like shape and I'm taking the pressure off as my stroke goes further along or up the page so that I'm tapering the thickness of my branch too. I'm trying not to mirror the same directional strokes if you see what I mean. I'm trying to make them random. I want some to overlap, overlap some to go one way others to go another. If you find that you make something like a really nice angle on your branch, use that to come off for the next branch like I did just there. Right, we have a second large branch or, or tree coming in, but this time I'm pulling it in at a completely different angle. And then I'm going to continue to overlap and overlayer these kind of slightly curved but mostly curved but angular wriggled marks and you can see that the tree is slowly starting to build up and it's actually because it's the overlapping and the tapering off of the strokes to finer branches that's actually giving the illusion of this being a tree you can randomly flick off some sticks and twigs, the sort of things that just grow out of trees and, and branches in various places. And all this adds to the effect too. And another thing to notice is that even though I'm trying to keep my lines and branches random, the tree as a whole is tending in a diagonal from bottom left to top right in a sort of general sense, if you see what I mean. Now this is what helps to give this tree its windswept look. Now I'm not going to pull this, the tree or trees across the whole painting, but I'm going to bring some of the branches about halfway across because with the way the rest of my painting is, I think that's going to be to give me a balanced painting while still keeping it very loose looking hopefully. Next I'll take my finer rigger and I'm going to do ex um, almost the same to the ends but this time I'm going to pull off a lot more twigs from each tiny twig if you see what I mean just to give the illusion of there being a lot more twigs towards the end as there, as, as there often are with this kind of tree. I'm not going for exact realism here. Um, 
it's quite stylized, but I think it I think it looks looks it looks quite nice. This might seem a bit daunting to start with, but the more you practice, like I always say, the more you practice, the more confident you are as well and not worried about making a mistake, but the the, the quicker it will be bef uh, for you to become familiar, especially with using the rigger and confident. With the rigger, you just want to let it sort of run away with you a little bit, a little bit, if you know what I mean. And that's what gives you the spontaneous looking lines, is not painting too slowly with it. But that, of course, comes with practice and confidence. I'm just going to fill in towards the top left-hand corner, pulling some of the branches back out across the tape so they go off out of the picture, and, um, and pulling some forward as well. Again, trying to make some of the branches um, cross over each other, overlap and layer. Maybe a little bit more here. You can, of course, have lots more branches. You could put in another tree um, or you could keep it less. And then you could also, if you wanted to, you could stipple on some, some, some leaves and things. But I'm going to leave it as a bare tree because I like that kind of stylized look. And that's it. I'm finished now. So here's the finished painting. Um, I think it's time to take the tape off. Oh, it's paint's gone under the tape in a few places, but it doesn't matter because uh, the mount would or mat would go over that before framing if it was going to get framed. So pulling off all the tape, and you can see what I mean about where the the tree looks as if it's. Out, you know, it grows out of shot and it's just leaning into the painting. Um, you know, we could imagine that the tree exists outside of the painting almost. Well, I can anyway. And I think the tree works quite nicely with the, the textures that we got in the foreground from using the cling film and laying it across um, the wet in wet painting. Um, and it's left left us that lovely texture, which of course could be snow, it could be just um, ground textures. With a loose painting, it could be whatever you want it to be, really, or whatever the viewer sees. And that's as part of the you know special quality of of painting loose is that you know you could just let your imagination run wild, really. Well, I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you'll give it a try and please like and if you're not already subscribed, it'd be lovely if you would um, click the subscribe button and the bell icon and then you'll be notified of any further um, whenever I post videos. And if you'd like to support me, you could um, click on the link to Patreon and take a look and maybe join. I always post the YouTube tutorials there early and there's plenty of exclusive content um, for my patrons and I thank them very much for their support. Okay I'll see you again soon. Take care. Bye.